Welcome to Sharing the Middle, where recovering perfectionists, overachievers, and anyone in the middle of a struggle come together to learn to embrace the messy middles of life. I'm Lacey, your friend in the middle and guide, whose claim to fame this week is actually prepping and cooking the food I told myself I would to prepare for the week. In today's mini episode, we have an essay from the middle about finding the just right, advice from the middle about some support, and of course, my random assortment of Lacey loves. Let's jump right in. Our essay from the middle today is called Finding Just Right. This morning, my son and daughter were playing in my bed while my husband finished getting ready for the day. Like it usually does, it became almost like wrestling. My son would push my daughter over and they would laugh so hard, she would pop right back up and the whole thing would start over again. Being the clear-headed observer, I knew this would go south quickly, so I reminded my son not to be too rough and to stay gentle. He heeded my advice, but did get a little more rough a few times, once again needing the reminder. After one of these times, my husband declared he was done, reminded my kids to be gentle with each other, and they were off. This moment stayed in my mind, though. Toddlers are constantly checking boundaries to see if they get to the too much. My son was actively trying to figure out the right amount in that moment, enough to push her over and be playful, but not too much to hurt her. When I thought of it in that way, I empathized with him deeply. I am constantly trying to figure out the right amount for myself. The right amount of parenting. My mom and sisters did the podcast this week, and it was one of the things that my mom mentioned about letting your kids make mistakes or bad decisions so that they can learn the consequences. This is kind of what I was doing with my kids in bed, letting them continue to do something that could cause issues, but knowing that they were having fun and not stepping in being overprotective. Finding the right space between making your kid a bubble boy and being a completely free-range parent is something that I'm constantly striving for. There are so many times I want to step in either to move things along or to stop my kids from making a mistake, but I have to stop myself to allow them to experience and to discover their own path. Logically, I want my kids to be the masters of their own future. In practice, it is much more complicated. This also felt so timely because I'm in the middle of figuring out how much I can do to be able to have more of my independence back. Pacing and figuring out the right amount for my illness. I still don't know exactly what is wrong with me, but for the things that I could potentially have, pacing is a big thing. It's basically conserving your energy throughout the day to better manage and avoid things that will make the illness worse. It's basically a complex math problem where you try to figure out how to land on just the right amount of doing to not end up crashing later on. Being the person I am, I want to get the right amounts, plug it into this math problem, and then adjust my activity accordingly. As you can guess, that is just not possible. I didn't even try to Google it because I know everything is going to say that the right amount of activity that someone can do is different from person to person. Also, to make things more complicated, there are different types of activity. Yes, physical activity, but mental and emotional activities add to this overall bucket. What am I doing instead? I am attacking the problem at all places I can by documenting the heck out of my days. I have a really uh, intense notion uh, dashboard that I've created for this if you want to go to the website and check it out. Maybe soon I will have enough data to designate what my right amounts are. Is there even a right amount? Okay, look, I know there isn't really a right amount of everything. There is no secret answer key in the index of life that will tell me whether or not i parented this moment the best I could, or found out the right level of activity for the day. I do realize that I need to calm down and be gentle with myself. Here's where this gets more complicated. Other people are involved. I want to show up my best to give my kids a happy and fulfilling life. Figuring out the right pacing may allow me to show up more for my husband and contribute to that parenting goal. With that, I guess I will give myself the same leeway I gave my son while he was playing with my daughter. 
not step in and try to completely fix it, but give myself the space to mess up so I can learn. Okay, let's jump into our advice from the middle. Today it says, I'm struggling to support a loved one who is going through a difficult time. I want to be there for them, but I don't know how to help. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells around them, and I'm worried that anything I say or do will make their situation worse. I'm at a loss for what to do. Do you have any advice for supporting a loved one in need when you don't know what to do? How can I be there for them without making things worse? Any guidance you have would be greatly appreciated. First and foremost, uh, you want to be there for someone going through a difficult time. Kudos to you. That is great. I think a lot of times we see people going through a difficult time and don't even take the initiative, not that we have bad intentions, but to take the initiative that you want to help is is a really big deal. I also want to say kudos to you that you want to help in the way that will help them the best, not that is the most convenient to you. Uh, I... I It's interesting in talking about support because people get very, very defensive quickly. I learned, uh, I did uh, some posts on Instagram about this, and people did not like that I was saying that there are better ways to give support. They're like, well, I'm offering support, so, you know, they should be grateful for it. And, And yes, that is true, but it is taking this idea of I give support giving support is a black and white issue and it's not. It is a very complex and nuanced thing. So kudos to you for, again, also recognizing that it is complex and that your support, while always appreciated, may have different impacts than you intend. And that's where I usually, I've talked before about this idea of your intent to help does not negate potential impacts on the person that you're trying to help that could be detrimental. So again, you, my friend, are already kicking ass because you want to help and you recognize that you want to help in a way that is the most beneficial for them and that maybe there are ways that could not be as helpful. We'll say that. Or you say make their situation worse. I would reframe that thought to not as helpful because you are not responsible for their situation. So just, I mean, I'm making that assumption. Maybe this is a whole Scandoval thing and you are responsible. And if this is Tom Sandoval, I don't want to help you. Um, Anyway, (laughs) if you don't know what that is, I'm going to, I love Vanderpump rules and let's talk about it. Anyway, I I think the best thing that you can do is step one, acknowledge that you see that they're going through a difficult time with them. Sometimes people just need someone to be like, holy crap, this is hard. This sucks. And not try to fix it or solve it for them, but just come in and be like, this, this all really sucks. I hate that for you. I hate this for you. It's not good. And and validate their situation because a lot of times people, when they want to give support, come in and they want to minimize what someone's going through. Again, great intentions, right? You want to distract them, take their mind off of it. But sometimes it makes it seem like what they're going through is trivial and not important. So validating what they're going through is great. The other part of it is you're allowed to ask them how you can help the best. Or what I prefer is to say, give an idea of what you can do to show up. So then you give them the opportunity to shut them down. No, them to shut you down. (laughs) Whatever. Okay. But the big thing here is that you are listening and talking. I think a lot of times when it comes to support, we feel like there's this right or wrong answer And there's lots of right answers, and it is different between each person. So being open and honest and vulnerable in your communication of, I am here to help you. I'm not sure the best thing to do. Here are some ideas that I have. You can can let them say yes or no, because that's the beauty of 
going into a situation this way, you are treating them as the their uh, expert of their situation and respecting that they are the expert. You're not the expert. And then it's their responsibility to be able to say to you, yes or no, because they have that ability. And maybe you say that to them of like, hey, these are some ideas that I had, but if none of these sound good, no worries. I just want to provide you support. And I think the more that you can eliminate those possible points of misconstrued intentions or that kind of thing and approaching it with this open, honest communication, the best it's going to go for both of you. So yeah, I I would say maybe instead of walking on eggshells, you can soft shoe in. I know that that's a, that's a good dance move, right? I don't know. Just enter quietly and ask intention with intention. You don't want to barge in <laughs> like a bull. Uh, but yeah, I think most people are just so grateful that someone is there to validate, listen, and willing to help them. Now, there are some things like depression that does make it difficult for someone to accept your help, to be there, and that kind of thing. And so in that case, you may offer help and maybe they're in denial and they won't accept it or whatnot. You showing up and you saying something and you putting them first is the best that you can do. So I know that I talked a lot about them, you know, their feelings and whatnot being important, but also remember that you are a person in this equation and you get consideration too. So whether that means you offer support and they treat you badly, hey, that is then that is a clear indicator to me that you're allowed to not support. I know that that was a lot, but I just... I have a lot of thoughts on support, and I think the more that we talk about supporting someone and that there are nuances and that there are different things that could go wrong in the process, the better we'll all be. Heck, if you even just want to send them this podcast, one, to get my listens up, thanks, friend, but also, I'm just joking. I mean, I'm not, but I am. Anyway, but to be like, hey, this is a situation that I'm in. I want to support you. What do you think? You've opened the door. And then they could tell you that I suck, and that's fine. But you've started the conversation, which is what's important. Good luck, my friend. Remember, if you are looking for some advice, you can always email hello at the middle.com, and I could potentially read your advice letter on here and give you some sweet advice. my friends. Welcome to Lacey Loves, where I basically just talk about things that have made me happy for the past week. This week has been an interesting one for me, just really coming to a place of acceptance with what's going on with my health and trying to figure out the best way possible for me to do things. And I'm really feeling at peace in a way that I haven't in a while. So I love that journey for myself. (laughs) I even went on a walk outside with my family on, I think it was Saturday, and it was wonderful. And it's probably the furthest that I've walked in, goodness, since Halloween, because it was almost the same route that we did on Halloween. Uh, But my son held my hand and we walked and he chatted my ear off the whole time and it was the best. It was fantastic. So that's another thing I love, walking outside. (laughs) And since it's starting to get a little warmer out, it's possible. The other thing that I've really been enjoying is I've just been leaning into me writing for fun again. I wrote a little thing about Love is Blind on Saturday because I had to get my thoughts out. Was that Saturday or Sunday? It doesn't matter. And I posted it on the middle website, the blog, and It just was so much fun to sit down and talk about something silly and fun. And I'm going to keep doing that more often. I think I might make it a series that is part of the Patreon. So if you want to read those moving forward, um, we'll we'll say that that's part of the Patreon tier. I think it's the first tier that's $3 a month. So 
uh, any, you know, it's fun for me and hopefully it would bring you joy if you wanted to subscribe. I did not mean to sell Patreon right there, but here we are. Anyway, let's talk about Love is Blind because that is another thing that made me happy this week. Reality TV in general, I'm really loving right now. What a time to be alive, friends. With the Scandaval, I've already talked about ones, Real Housewives, Ultimate Girls Trip in Thailand premiered last week, and then this week, or like I said, also Love is Blind premiered last week, which, holy moly. Uh... You know, it's interesting with Love is Blind, I actively fast forward through parts because I am I am invested in their relationships. For example, there's a, com- uh, a um, couple named Brett and Tiffany. They're delightful and lovely. And I think anyone with a heart, even though a little bit went wrong in the pods with them, is pulling for them. But man, there is some mean girlness happening that is sad (laughs) and depressing and I imagine triggering for a lot of other people too just to see someone say something like nicely to your face and literally walk away to say a snide thing to their bff in the in the house or whatever is just uh not for me I don't like it literally like I felt ill watching it (sighs) I, I would love to think, did it make me stop watching? No, let's be honest. But did I go to Twitter instantly to see if it wasn't just me feeling this way? Absolutely. And it is nice to see that the large majority of people felt that way too. So <laughs> I'm like, love is blind. Whew. It is, I am getting into this place of really wanting to spring clean And as you probably know, if you've listened this far, I struggle with energy and and getting physically doing those things. So I have been trying to do like little things and I'm starting to notice the little things in my house that make it function more. And one of those things I put in the newsletter this week are these um, like cable sorters that I've started plugging in, plugging around the house uh, where you just like it holds the cables I have it in the Amazon storefront and on my links. And it's like 10, 15 bucks. But man, the, my favorite one is the one right next to my bed because I put it on the side of the nightstand. And so now I have all of my cords because they're coming from a lot of different places. I'm in my bed all the time. So basically, I could rule the world from my bed. And so I've got all these cables everywhere and <laughs> I can organize them and reach them easily with that thing sticking on the side of my nightstand. <laughs> I ha- I have to say, again, I love this segment because I start talking and I have like an idea of what I'm going to say, but where I end up is always interesting to me and hopefully to you. I really hope that you have a great week. Uh, we're going back to normal quote unquote programming for the middle next week where I'm, uh, interviewing another amazing and cool woman when it comes to her middles and life. And I just want to say thank you again to my women who made me, who joined me this month because I did get so much joy out of bringing them on and talking to them sometimes twice because of technical (laughs) issues And I learned a lot about myself in the process, and hopefully you all got a lot out of it too. All right. Have a great week. I'll see you next week.